Thank you so much, Stefan, for the opportunity and then everything that happened after everybody that has worked with us. Uh, it's great to see so um, Java ecosystem ramping up for AI. It's also very interesting. I'm very curious about the Unbubble talk myself. So here I am presenting you another um, agent orchestration framework with Langchain4j. So um, this framework, the whole agentic code, most of it was written by Mario Fusco. Thank you very much. So why am I presenting this here, right? Um, so the reason that I'm presenting it and not Mario himself is that Mario was already on this keynote stage last year. Uh, this was Mario before he went on the keynote stage. And for the people that missed it, this was Mario during the keynote. And I'm not sure if that's like an ecstatic smile or is more like terrorized. It reminds me of this guy. <laughs> and this was Mario after the keynote. So that is why. <laughs> yeah, so that's, that's really the reason he cannot present his own work here today. And one could wonder if it shouldn't have been the opposite thing that um, he could present today his own work and I would be the one getting the haircut. <laughs> but then maybe, maybe not. Good, uh, let's talk about Langchain4j Agentic. So Langchain4j is all about uh, connecting to LLMs at its core, making that very easy and make it very easy to swap. Uh, we support all major commercial model suppliers as well as any local model you can run on your laptop or on-prem. Around that, Langchain4j comes with a thing called AI service that provides a lot of tooling to make it much easier to work with these verbose, non-deterministic LLMs. So the first thing um, is structured, so we can send um, Java objects in as arguments, and we can get Java objects out of LLMs. We do a lot of translation behind the scene, of course, but makes it nice to work with for Java developers. We have things like guardrails, checking what goes in before sending it in, and also checking what comes out before giving it back to the user. Um, instructions to make the model behave like we actually want. We deal with the memory in different ways. We have observability, so you can keep your app in check. Um, then content retriever is very important. You can get all kinds of information from company documents, from API, from databases to make your model know about more than what it's originally trained on. And then tools where we say, hey, you have these tools available. They need these arguments. Call them whenever you want. We run them for you. We send the answer back. And the nice thing, all this functionality, or almost all of it, is also supported in Agents, which is mainly a wrapper around this AI service. And the wrapper is there, so you can make, uh, put these agents in a workflow and make it run through in a smooth way. One last thing, there's often a lot of confusion. So Langchain4j can work framework lots, vanilla Langchain4j. We have a very strong Quarkus integration, but we also have a very strong Spring Boot integration, and we work with uh, other frameworks and other standards too, just so you know. Now, um, the types of agent orchestration Langchain4j Agentic supports is the workflow, where you determine uh, in code very deterministically which uh, agent gets called in which order and which output goes as input to which next agent. Or we have the more real agentic self-orchestration where one supervisor agent will dispatch tasks to um, his sub-agents when he feels it's needed. Let's look into um, the different type of agents we support. So we have the AI agents, which are these AI services we saw. They have an LLM at their core. But we also have non-AI agents. And uh, I share Rod's opinion, whatever you can outsource to normal code Use a non-AI agent, it's just your normal code. And we have it wrapped in an agent so you can put that in that workflow wherever it makes sense to have code instead of LLMs. And human in the loop agent, we have it too, because very often you need some human interaction to say, uh, yes, this is fine, continue, or please no, or here's extra information. Um, do take a picture. This leads you straight to our agentic tutorial in the Langchain4j examples repository. Let's show a bit of code. I feel very awkward for being the only one <laughs> showing code here, and I'm afraid. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> so, what? Good. <laughs> Um, good. So I show you quickly these types of agents. Um, we have here a meal planner agent, and it's basically an interface. 
it looks very much like the AI services that you may already know, but it's this time it's annotated agent says uh, what it does. It gives a system message with instructions, basically uh, make a meal with four ingredients based on user health goal and user preferences, and then basically you send in a user profile object with these user preferences, and we want to get back a meal object. Then we only have an interface now. If we want to use it, we're going to make uh, an implementation like this: agentic services dot agent builder from this meal planner agent. We choose a chat model for the demo. I'm using OpenAI, but you can plug anything local or commercial in there, and it has some tools where it gets nutritional information uh, about uh, different ingredients. And that's it. Then we can use it. We make a little user profile with some preferences. The health goal here is high protein. And we're basically now running our meal planner, create meal. And let's see what is done. So we can see, because I'm logging a bit, um, that it has actually called this nutrition content retriever with all these things the user liked. And then it gets back protein information and comes with um, a chicken and broccoli quinoa bowl with these ingredients, which is a Java object. So that's our AI agent. And again, this is meant to be used in a bigger system. Uh, Non-AI agent, that's basically just annotating real code with an agent. And human in the loop, it's very important, so I show it. Here we will have agentic services human in the loop builder. You say what's the input, you say what's the output going to be called. And then you can write something, um, for example, to console. And then the response reader, in this case, we read from console. If we run this one, you'll see it's much faster because it's not AI. Um, and it asks us, OK, we have these products not available. Worcestershire sauce and speculas pasta. Do you want to order something else instead? So that would be like at the point of ordering, oh, we have things missing. We need to ask our user. So I'm going to say, yeah, I want samurai sauce and uh, duo choco instead. And I mean, it's a silly example. You just see uh, the output is what I answered. But it can then be used further on in our system. OK, now, the whole point of agents is to use them together. So if we start with a sequence of agents, here we have four that are going to be called in a row. And the new thing, the compost thing, is also just an agent. So you can use it again in, in other parts of the workflow. Either you're going to be lazy, you're not going to care about typing, and you just say, we have a sequence here, and you're going to have a, run, uh, a general invoke method on a map of input objects, and we get an object out. Or you're going to be more careful, and then you can actually define, type your agent, and say what you are going to put in, what is going to come out. And then you can really build beautiful Java things where you have objects as input and objects as return. I'm um, going to show you an example. The example I'm going to show you has uh, helps you write your CV, which <laughs> in AI times may be useful. Um, we have a CV generator that takes in your life story and gets out a master CV with everything you've done. And afterwards, we will have a CV tailor that will tailor your master CV to specific instructions or, for example, a job description. And that gets you a tailor tailored CV out. If you want to design agentic systems, I um, recommend you actually draw them out to see what are the real inputs, what are the real outputs, and what are intermediary values. So for example, here, the master CV coming out of agent 1 is an input variable for agent 2. And then we see life story and instructions up there that are real inputs that we will have to pass from the start. And the output is the tailored CV. Yes, let's look at the code. So um, if we want to build a sequence, I have a CV generator and a CV tailor that are very much like the, uh, LL, the AI agent we saw before. And I'm going to show you the typed one where I create a sequence CV generator. And I say, OK, we have a, sorry, it's strings this time. Uh, two strings, instructions, and life story go in, and we get a CV back. Um, and if we want to then build this, because it's an interface again, we're going to use the um, agentic services dot sequence builder. And we define our sub agents, CV generator and CV tailor that we've uh, defined before. All this is part of the tutorial code, so you can run through it with some more time. And um, if we run this one, it should uh, take John Doe's life story, um, fit it to a backend uh, application job opening. Um, 
in the tutorial, all examples work together and to become a big hiring flow. It just sometimes takes a bit of time because it's quite long strings to generate these CVs. Uh, so the final CV we get back is a Java object that is tailored to the job. OK. Um, one thing that's still important to know with Langchain for Geagentic is that how do we manage all these variables that fly around? They all are part of an agentic scope, and there's only one in your agentic system. No matter how many layers, no matter how much depth you have, there's one agentic scope that holds all input, intermediary, and output variables, as well as the conversation as a context and the agent invocation list afterwards. So when we start in our example, we have the live story and the instructions that we send in. Our CV generator added the master CV. Our CV tailor could, in theory, for example, edit the master CV again. But in this case, we said, yeah, we make a tailored CV. So you can also like, change anything in the agentic scope. Which other uh, things do we have than just sequences? We have agents that can be called in parallel. And we support also async agents to make things go faster. We have loops where something is executed until some exit condition is met or until the maximum number of loops um, has happened. And we have conditional agents where, based on uh, predicate, basically one or more other agents are going to continue. It allows you to make composed workflows. As you can see, this is the when we, they receive the CV, we have kind of um, the hiring workflow. You see there three parallel reviews which in itself is a new agent. Then we have uh, combining the reviews, which is non-AI agents. Whenever you can add them, they're faster, cheaper, deterministic. And then we see a human in the loop that's going to check uh, if whatever the AI suggests, higher or not higher, is actually a good idea. And then based on his decision, we're going to let an AI agent inter um, organize the interview or, or email that uh, candidate is not selected. And then you can put that in a sequence. This is how you build composed workflows. The other one we had, if you remember well, is the supervisor agent, where the agent itself will choose when to call which sub-agent, which is um, when your process is not so well defined, say um, a travel planner, where maybe depending on the weather or people's preferences or cancellations, your whole flow risks changing, then you better use a supervisor agent. Um, you have a bit less control you have a bit less programming work as well. Up to you. Um, good. I have not much time today, but I just want to point you to our example repository. And what we have there is um, next to what is uh, present in the tutorial. We have also quick navigation to anything that could interest in you, like uh, manipulating the agentic scope, obtaining human validation, working with async agents, and so on. And uh, also guardrails, agent to, uh, A to A integration. So we have many, many, many things. Go and have a look uh, and have fun with it. There's also three talks that I can recommend um, that are happening. The first one is about building this agentic framework with Mario Fusco and his colleagues is going to be very interesting. That's tonight. Uh, on Thursday, we have how to basically use this AI agentic patterns also again with Mario Fusco and colleagues. And then I have a talk on Friday where it's more when to use agentic, how to control um, and prepare your LangChain for j app for production. So if you're struggling with doing weird things, I hope to give you answers there. With that, um, I thank our team and Dimitri Lebarski, uh, the main developer from Langchain 4J. And we have so many contributors, individuals, but also companies that spend their time. For example, the guys from Red Hat, they uh, have contributed so many new features. The people at Microsoft, they are checking for CVEs and making sure our library stays secure. So we thank all these people very, very much. Uh, here are once more the link to the examples repository and the documentation on agentic systems. If you want to get in touch with Mario or me, you can do so via LinkedIn or find me at the Oracle booth. But if you have questions about the agentic framework or bugs or IDs, please go to uh, Langchain 4J GitHub repository, open a discussion. We welcome any feedback very much. If you want to contribute, of course, we are a very attractive project, so please uh, do so. Or get in touch with us during a panel discussion or the buff um, on tomorrow. Yes. Thank you very much.